Hi, John McElroy here talking all things automotive. Today, I'm talking with David Halleck. He's the CEO of a company called Viaduct, which is using generative AI to help automakers find the root cause of problems to help eliminate recalls. And man, that could save them billions, David. What are you doing there? Absolutely. Yeah, I think of us as the, the platform that helps identify, solve, and predict product failures. And really, there's this explosion of data in connected vehicles. And I think of us as the tool that turns raw data into actionable insights to help reduce downtime, improve quality, and ultimately build better vehicles. So how does this work? I mean, automakers let you have access to all their warranty data and you start boring down into it? Pretty much, yeah. I would say there's three main pillars of data sources that we leverage. There's the manufacturing and assembly data, there's the telematics data, and then there's the service and warranty data. And generally what we use our AI for is to detect patterns and correlations and, and issues that may be emerging in this data that you know do not seem obvious perhaps to the human eye and you need more advanced tools to uncover. Can you give us some examples? Yeah, sure. Um, I would say, uh, obviously, you need to be a little careful because I don't think a lot of customers like uh, or, or OEMs like sharing their dirty laundry publicly. But No, you don't have to name names, but just give us some examples. Absolutely. So we will see things like a manufacturer gets a, a part, for example, a bolt from a supplier that in mountainous terrain in hot weather is, is failing at 20x the acceptable tolerance rate. Or we might detect that an air sensor in cold weather is butting up against a, a, a front grill and is actually causing the, the sensor to malfunction. Those are the types of patterns that that you wouldn't know to look for, you, you wouldn't know to expect, but are causing downtime, are causing check engine lights, are causing significant inconveniences for, for drivers on the road. Mm -hmm. And so this uh, AI system that you've got can just parse through all the data and get to the root cause far more quickly, eh? Exactly, yeah, and I think of it as, these used to be a very manual or hunt and peck process. And I think uh, you, you mentioned that AI is, is, is ubiquitous. Everyone's talking about it, but people still very often think of AI as the tool they can use, you know, chat GPT to write a poem in or, or something like that. But really where I think it, it shines and where the real value is today is in these much more tactical and tangible use cases. So here it is these three unique massive data sources and needing help, needing a, almost a virtual assistant to help you source, parse, and find patterns in the data that are predictive of downstream failures on the road. So you can prioritize, you can pull these vehicles off the road before they cause downtime to customers. So, you know, as I, I said at the, uh, the beginning of this interview, you know, automakers spend billions of dollars on warranty and recall and field service work. Uh, I gotta believe they're beating a path to your door or are they not? They are, and I would say everyone we work with is, uh, it, it, we've really seen massive impact and massive ROI, both in terms of short-term warranty reduction and long-term customer satisfaction. I think really though, a lot of this requires a, a shift in mindset. I think generally people think of data systems as, as part of IT, and they don't realize that these big data AI systems should be treated as first-class citizens in the way that they've begun to work with tier one suppliers on advanced driver assistance systems or, or more advanced technologies. And I think more broadly, as the industry becomes comes to realize that you need the state of the art, you know, let's call it vehicle monitoring, vehicle health monitoring solution, that's when we, we view our position as the, the market leader in the space as, as gonna allow us to, to work with more and more of these partners. Mm -hmm. Very interesting that you mentioned uh, manufacturing. So you can collect data on uh, a real-time basis and say like an assembly plant and help ID where it might have problems. It, exactly, and I would say our sweet spot is actually tying data from the assembly plant to downstream behaviors once they leave the plant and are on the road. What, so what do you mean downstream behaviors? Uh, Let's call it not necessarily the, you know, catching something the minute it occurs at the plant, but realizing that when these vehicles are failing on the road or when some pattern is emerging on the road, being able to tie it back to this specific machine in this specific plant or this specific supplier that three weeks ago changed their process that is now causing this downtime in the first place. That's extraordinary. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been fun. And for me, I'm a, I'm a data person through and through. So I, I really love the complexity of it. And I love the, the impact and the real world value that you provide once you really catch these issues and, and can tangibly see the downtime avoided for, for vehicles on the road. So how, how long does it take to, to track one of these problems and get to the root cause? 
Yeah. So generally it's, it's pretty much instantaneous. Actually in our, in our product, we have something we call suggested issues that usually let's call it once a day will run. And our customers will see every day, new issues that are emerging, new trends that are popping up in their data. And more or less, you know, these are things that happened yesterday on the road. They're already detecting it, catching it and realizing what's going wrong in the plant today. That's amazing. I mean, that's never been able to be possible in the past. No, this used to be months, if not years. I think there's plenty of famous stories about issues that people heard inklings about, but no one could really put together. And then they realized three years later that there's, you know, a billion dollar recall that they're going to have to issue, uh, you know, because because they were blind to you know, sort of all the different data signals and data sensors that were cluing in on this this problem more broadly. Mm hmm. And it's extraordinary that you can get to it that instantaneously. It is, but I think that's the magic of AI. I think really this is where the rubber meets the road. And I know AI is in the middle of this hype cycle, but I really do think the, the first real use cases are coming out. And this is one where there's massive amounts of data. You just need to be able to process it, parse it, and, and detect these patterns, which is exactly what uh, a tool like that is, is good at. How sophisticated is it from this standpoint? I, I understand if you're collecting data from manufacturing or warranty and parsing through it, but I also know that a lot of problems that lead to defects and recalls and, and things like that have got to do with, uh, you know, problems in a, uh, in a company's operations, you know, may, maybe there's silos, engineering's not talking to manufacturing, that's not talking to, to someone else. And uh, can, can you track things like that? that? That's a great question. And I actually think uh, one thing I like to say is, it's not that AI is going to replace humans in the first place, it's that humans using AI are going to replace humans not using AI. And I think more broadly, thinking of AI as solving all of these operational problems is the wrong mindset. What I really think this will do is it will shine a flashlight. It will highlight these issues, include these issues, and then we will work with these companies. And I think these OEMs are very well positioned because they're, they're extremely advanced technologically to use these tools to improve their operations, to improve these communications, to, to catch these issues more quickly. So y your program could actually help a company identify things in its own corporate structure that it needs to change. It, it could, and I, I'm not necessarily, uh, again, it's not that it automatically recommends a new org structure that they should do, but it absolutely highlights these inconsistencies, these anomalous patterns, these these behaviors that might not be sub, might not be optimal for, for building the best vehicles and getting them on the road. I know you can't name names, but can you tell us like how many automakers or suppliers or, you know, you know, we, how many, we, how successful is this going in the industry? Yeah, we're, we're still a relatively small company, but we're working with about half a dozen uh, OEMs and uh, one or two large suppliers as well. So primarily growing uh, pretty steadily in the space. Some of them in early stages of deployment, some of them we are deployed on almost their entire vehicle population and vehicle fleet. So I'm a CEO at a car company. I look at my you know warranty work and I go, oh my gosh, I, I got to call Viaduct. What do you do? You go in, you, you hook up a laptop and you tell them what to do? Or I mean, uh, how, how's it work? Pretty much. We've got a pretty set process. Let's call it, uh, you know, the first couple of weeks we come in, we have a very opinionated data model and we latch on and we, we plug into their, their Snowflake or their Databricks or whatever data system they use. We tie and integrate their data together, provide a single pane of glass that gives them, you can think of it as a, a health scorecard on their, their data sets. We work with them on what data sources they may be missing or what uh, you know, anomalous sensor readings they might be getting. And then usually within a month or so, we are spin up, we are giving users login access, and then they are finding issues, they're prioritizing issues, and honestly, they're predicting which vehicles are going to fail on the road. I, I imagine you've got different price points that you offer. Can can you give us any, you know, range? Uh, what would it cost to have you come in and, and work on my company if I were a CEO of a car company? Yeah. Absolutely. And it's, uh, you know, very different if you're a, a startup with, you know, your first vehicles getting off the line versus one of the, the big players. But broadly, we'll have a technology license fee where this is, you know, powering what we call the TSI engine or our AI engine that uh, that detects these patterns. And then usually it's just a per vehicle application fee. So every mm -hmm. vehicle we monitor, we, uh, you know, we, we scale as as frankly as our value scales and as we, we prove ourselves more broadly in the organization. Yeah, well, I got to believe you're proving yourself because I know this is a crying need in the industry. And like I said, from the, from the beginning, they, they spend billions every year on this. A absolutely. And I like to think of it as we, we really try to make sure we pay for ourselves within the first three to six months. 
And uh, yeah, we've been growing. We just raised our Series B and we are, you know, for, for me at least, I think it's a very exciting time. And, and frankly, we're riding a lot of tailwinds of software-defined vehicles, better data capture, better sort of data fluency around, around the broader automotive industry that we are, you know, here at the right place at the right time with the right technology. Uh, am I missing anything here or what, what's the next step for Viaduct? Yeah, I think there's there's a lot, and I think we're really at the beginning of the race. But for me, at least, what I view as, I think this right now is a very crucial time. I think as software-defined vehicles become a thing, as the transition to EVs are become more of a uh, uh, become more real, and frankly, as a lot of the problems of vehicles on the road are software problems, are ADAS problems, they're not mechanical issues. I think the learned history of these OEMs of how to service these vehicles, how to run quality processes, how to design vehicles needs to change. And so I think in a sense, all everyone recognizes that now is the right time to redesign their processes. You can't use what you used 20 years ago today. And so I think really building an AI first approach from the ground up, both with Viaduct and more broadly around the org is, is the big transition. And I think is going to allow across, you know, the case of connected autonomy, shared and electric. In my view, connected is the one that these next five years is going to be the the biggest push and, and drive the biggest ROI. And that's that's what I I see happening and I'm very excited to be a part of it. Yeah, you're lucky. I mean, cars are only getting more and more complicated and they're going to need your service even more. I uh, I was gonna say, I, it's not necessarily that I'm uh, I'm happy as, as these cars get complicated and break, <laughs> but it uh, just makes it clearer and clearer that, you know, using Excel spreadsheets and, uh, and those sorts of tools just won't work and you really need a, uh, a foundational new system and a new approach to to tie all this data together and and use it to make sure the vehicles on the road are staying healthy. Well, this is an incredible story. I can't wait to watch how you guys develop and especially can't wait to see the impact that it's got on the automotive industry. Absolutely. Thanks so much, John. I really appreciate the time. Thanks, David. Really appreciate it as well. All right. Take care.